Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Elise Anderson. In our show this time, we'll cover the Pacific Telecommunications Council, PTC, an annual Asia-Pacific Conference for Global Telecom. Thousands of people come to Hawaii every January for the conference. This year it was called PTC 19, From Pipes to Platforms. PTC is a global nonprofit membership organization promoting the advancement of information and communication technologies, ICT, remember that term, ICT, in Asia Pacific, the most dynamic region in the world today. PTC is at the nexus of two of the most important trends, the rise of the network digital society and the exponential growth in Asia Pacific. PTC attracts more than 45 countries, 300 companies, 3,500 representatives, and 7,600 participants. Organized in 1978, PTC had its first conference in Honolulu in 1979. It was incorporated as a Hawaii nonprofit in 1980, and over the years has become a center for ICT in Asia Pacific. Through PTC's annual conferences, committees, and events, PTC brings telecom leaders together to share insights on industry trends, strategies, policy, regulation, and best practices, as well as cutting-edge ICT products and services. PTC 19 celebrated PTC's 41st anniversary this year. Thousands of members and attendees showed up to share and explore the sea changes in global telecom. PTC customarily meets at the Hilton Hawaiian Village, and this year was no exception. As a membership organization, PTC attracts and connects global leaders in telecom and information technology industries who drive the development of ICT in Asia Pacific. As a nonprofit organization, PTC is dedicated to educating professionals in the region. It stimulates conversations and collaborations that set the stage for the growth of ICT throughout Asia Pacific. PTC's vision is a better world where people and business organizations are better connected and can enjoy a better quality of life through the innovative use of ICT. PTC's outreach initiatives include its academy, its broadband report, its projects initiative, its young scholars initiative, and its annual PTC conference here in Honolulu. The conference is unique and is Asia Pacific's premier telecom event, a springboard for the telecom industry and a platform to discovering what ICT will bring in the new year to follow. The conference took place over four days, every day more chock-a-block than the last. And that doesn't include all the meals, networking and social events, the charity walk, and the Innovation Awards Gala, honoring individuals and companies who have made the most notable contributions to move ICT forward.
We attended, of course. We walked the halls as we always do. We stopped and spoke to the members, speakers, and visitors who were there. And we toured the exciting exhibits and technologies on display. many international companies and ICT professionals who came from around the world. We asked them what they hoped to gain at the conference. Some were old friends who look each other up every year. Others came for the first time to see what PTC 19 offered. Yes, I'm Gilles Gooding. I'm working for Gloritech, which is a startup company based in Paris. And we are distributing a new technology, which is called LiFi. And from LiFi, we have different products. Uh, this one back, just in my bag, this is called Life, LiFi Max, that provides fast internet, um, 100 megabits per second download, and 40 megabits upload. And it's totally secure and radio waves free. That means there's no radiation. We don't use any radio frequency, any microwave. The LED by itself, it blinks naturally several million times per second. And we just use uh, this natural blinking of the light to be like two status, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. This is the basic for IT, so this equivalent of zero and one. And then by saying that, the principle is there. And then we have to um, manufacture a device that should, could read those, those blinking and transform those blinking in something like computers can read. Li-Fi is more like something secure, good for you, there's no radiation, no microwave, we don't use any uh, radio frequencies, just the, the light. The light, we know, doesn't go through your body. Secure, because you need to be under the beam of light to get access to the network. People will say, yeah, but how, how, I, want, I want Wi-Fi because it's, you know, it's more like I can get the, the signal outside. Say, yeah, that's the problem. If you get the signal outside, you don't know who's coming inside, inside your net network. Anyone can come and hack your, your system. This one with Li-Fi, you need to be under the beam of light. So you will see, technically, you will see that person coming next to you and then trying to suck all your data. Any LEDs technically can be transformed into something intelligent. That's why the project is to, for the smart cities of tomorrow. We can use any street lights, any LEDs to make them communicate. And today, we, a lot of us using smartphone. Tomorrow, uh, uh, said Samsung, Apple will integrate the Li-Fi technology that they have already. Like Wi-Fi is already integrated. You don't need dongle, you don't need anything, any more device integrated. Tomorrow, I think that they will integrate the Li-Fi technology inside the phone. So you just see your phone, your camera, put under the light, and then you have the connection and you can receive messages. Yeah, just to show you, this is a Li-Fi Max, which could be considered as a, a hotspot that, you know, delivers internet access. You just put this device on top of the ceiling and it covers under the beam, 100 megabits download in terms of speed, 40 upload, and then can connect 16 different users. Like meeting rooms, no more cable. Just one cable. This one cable in the ceiling, you don't see it. So it's Ethernet cable, PoE, power over Ethernet. And on the table, nothing that your laptop. Only your laptop and the 
small dongle like this that will connect your laptop. And then you have your connectivity. No need app, just plug, plug and play. We can deliver a message with the LED. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to, I'm gonna tell this light, I want to deliver a specific message that I will decide the thing to, to deliver. I'm gonna take a picture. I'm gonna take a picture of you. Or oh, maybe the cameraman. Okay, just the cameraman. Okay, I got it. I'm gonna program this lamp, this one, to show your picture on my phone, okay? Uh, just right here, and it said, read the lamp. Okay. It said, ready. Now, I can have this app, okay, this page. And then what I'm gonna put right under, is gonna pop up your picture. You want me to do it again? Okay, see the app right there? Okay, I'm gonna slightly put it under the lamp and it pops up your picture. Cool. You plug on DC power and that's it. And here it's like it delivers one signal, which is a QR code, light QR code. We all know what's, what is a QR code, okay? You flash the QR code and then give you access to information on, on the cloud. This one is the same, except it's a light. So it uses your front side camera. When you put under, it will deliver the message that you have decided. This one will deliver to you. Could be anything, a grocery stores. You go to the grocery store, there's lights everywhere, okay? How about I go, I see the, the letters, oh, Coca-Cola. Oh, I send me a message. Oh, if you buy two, I gave you two for free. Only those who was able to read the light can get the promotion. The seniority, expertise, and success of the speakers and attendees was evident. So many national and global companies you've heard about, and so many others you will surely hear about in the future. There were meetings, keynotes, discussions, and breakouts of every kind and nature on every subject of interest to the telecom industry. The conference also served, as before, as a platform for industry members to negotiate global telecom deals big global telecom deals right here in Hawaii. This notion of, of insatiable demand, this insatiable demand on a global basis, and indeed insatiable demand here in the Asia Pacific region. So by 2022, and all of this data comes from Cisco, by 2022, 172 exabytes per month. That's a billion gigabytes is an exabyte, so 172 billion gigabytes per month here in the Asia Pacific region. It's sort of mind boggling. 13 billion connected devices by 2022 as well. So this kind of enormous scaling of networks, enormous scaling of uh, capability, enormous scaling of information and data. And how do we as a satellite operator be relevant in, in, that, in that world and in that environment? And it's something that kind of keeps us up at night uh, in terms of how do we integrate. And so this is the reason though uh, that we can be fantastically relevant here and in other parts of the world, which is despite all of that capability, despite all of that network, despite the terrestrial building, despite the submarine cables that are coming into the region here, there's still almost half the world's population are not connected to the internet don't have the same access to uh, the world's marketplace, the world's uh, university and, and school in terms of education networks, the world's social networks. The difference between being connected and not being connected today more than ever uh, is the difference between having opportunity and not having opportunity. And if we look here, um, despite the fact that these numbers in percentage terms are growing and improving, which is super positive, the Asia Pacific region is the region that's the second worst connected on the planet after Africa. Um, and so there's much, much to do. And until 7 million people on the planet are connected, I think we, we will collectively feel like our work is not done. And so what have we been doing up till now? We've been working very, very hard with the communities here in the Asia Pacific region, and particularly the Pacific Islands, which are among the most diff difficult to connect. Um, 
French Polynesia, 118, I think it is, different islands. Uh, obviously some more populated than others, but there what we need is a network of scale and a network of reach. And so when, uh, when we drop fiber or, or satellite connectivity into single locations, you advance the population in that particular town or city, but you leave behind a significant number of the population to either live uh, remote from the capital city, or in, and in particular, when you're talking about islands which are then uh, further afield. So we've been working with OP OPT since 2007, and we've just uh, engaged in another stage of that relationship where we'll be delivering even more bandwidth and capability onto the island, but also services that we will bundle. And I'll talk a little bit about what that means from a satellite perspective. Our telecom in the Solomons, uh, Solomon Islands were one of our first O3B customers, uh, and as, as Tim mentioned, I was the, the CEO of O3B. O3B is now fully integrated within our broader portfolio of offerings at SES, uh, and our telecom on the Solomons were, was one customer who they, they were really suffering at the, from the lack of high quality connectivity uh, into Honiera. Um, we're now delivering more than a gigabit of connectivity uh, into the Solomons. And it's not just a pipe anymore. This is services that surround it. This is an education network that together with our telecom, we've developed in terms of supporting it, financing it, uh, and making a huge, huge difference to the population. You can see that the growth rate of the population in Africa is substantial. They will be by, let's say the IMF is projecting that by um, 2025, one of the largest continents will, uh, the population will come from Africa, right? There's a growth rate that's exponential and it's gonna surpass China and India and it's gonna have the youngest population um, globally, right? So typically between 18 and 24 years, that is where the largest growth rate is gonna come from. And when you have such a young population and the tremendous um, expansion of urbanization, these youngsters here, they want to spend money, right? So that's where that, that trillion spike of spend is going to come from. It's from this youngest population that's urbanizing in Africa. So you have, as we move through this, you also see the fertility rate is coming up compared to a very slow and aging rest of the world population. We saw the, the size of Africa. We saw where there is potential in the growth of Africa. We saw, and we know why now. We know that's because of the young population, the urbanization, that the youngsters would like to spend money, right? And this is also very attractive for foreign direct investment. If you look over the past two years, from 2018 and 2017, the U.S. remains the largest foreign direct investor in, in Africa by far. Nevertheless, um, projection coming up uh, for 2018 was 3.4% growth FDI. So slowly, slowly, the continent of Africa is making a comeback to a positive growth rate. The size of Africa remains very, very challenging. You don't have the infrastructures the way we have in North America or in Europe. Um, so the large population is still unconnected and satellite VSAT remains a dominant and predominant technology for connectivity. However, recently um, there are about 400 million uh, internet users, which is the second largest population of internet users globally, which is, which is massive, right? And you see the mobile penetration, this is growing at an exponential, exponential rate. When PTC was founded 41 years ago, satellites throughout Asia Pacific were a basis for connectivity. Since then, developments in cable have resulted in a shift of data traffic to cable, and cable is now critical infrastructure, pivotal in the transformation of a global data economy that relies on the internet. Now we live in a time of disruption where innovative technology, digitization, and the laws of accelerating growth are continually redefining every industry, especially telecom. AI, cybersecurity, the Internet of Things, 5G, and the cloud are the keys actually to our future. These discussions were timely in the global context right here in Hawaii. PTC19 showed yet again the magnet that Hawaii can be for telecom and business leaders from around the world. They come to talk, they come to listen, and they come to do business. PTC19 didn't miss very much. The multiple sessions went on every day in mind-boggling depth and detail. It was world-class, an entrepreneur's delight, and an engineer's dream in the technology that connects the mobile devices that make our world go round. 
The enthusiasm was palpable and ubiquitous. But we should always remember that at its core, PTC is a Hawaii-centric phenomenon. It was founded here, and it has had its conference and headquarters here for all these years. PTC belongs to Hawaii and makes Hawaii a global gathering place for telecom. This helps us in so many ways. It's obvious how valuable PTC is for our hospitality industry, for local business, and for Hawaii's struggling reputation as a place to do international business. For a better future, Hawaii needs more high-tech conferences like PTC. It is clearly in Hawaii's interest to support PTC and global conferences just like this. Yes, we want to be a hub in Asia Pacific. We want to be a tech, telecom, and business destination for all the world to see. And PTC can show us how. Check it out at ptc.org. And now let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them. But ThinkTech will take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia, and communities around the islands and the world. ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. The audio is on thinktechhawaii.com slash audio. And we post podcasts of all our shows on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. Think Tech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to join our live audience or participate in our shows, Write to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. You can call into our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in to 808-374-2014 and pose a question, make a comment, or participate in the discussion.
We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Elise, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Elise does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important ThinkTech episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Elise Anderson. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.